Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest CR Droid GSI ROM based on Android 14 onto your phone. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First and foremost, you will have to download and extract the Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive and these are the files of platform tools. You could extract them anywhere on your PC. Once that is done, you will have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on our phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to settings menu, then go to about phone, then go to detailed info and specs and tap on MIUI version or build number seven times, depending on the phone that you own. Then go back and again go back, then go to additional settings. And from here, you should now see developer option on many other phone instead of additional settings, you will have to go to the system menu and there you, you should find the developer option. So go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will now get a prompt on your phone in case of Xiaomi, Poco and Redmi, you will get a warning sign as well. So check mark, I'm aware of all the risk and then you will have to wait for 10 seconds. Once that is done, tap on OK and you might get an RC key prompt as well. So again, tap on OK and with this debugging is now enabled. So let's verify the debugging connection. For that, you have to go to platform tools folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and hit enter and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, you are now good to go ahead. So next up, you will now have to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do keep in mind that this will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide and the video and get this job done. On most phone, you will just have to boot your phone to fast boot mode and use the fast boot flashing unlock command and get this job done. On the other hand, in case of Xiaomi, Poco and Redmi phones, you will have to use the Me Unlock tool, then apply for permission, wait for seven days, and only after that, you could unlock the bootloader. I am talking about the MIUI and not the HyperOS. For that, it's quite complicated. I will discuss about that in my separate guide. I made a guide on that as well. You could refer to my guide for the HyperOS and on how to unlock the bootloader. Currently, I'm talking about the Hyper MIUI for Xiaomi phones. And for all the Android phones, you could refer to my guide and unlock the bootloader. Once that is done, your next course of action is to download the CR Droid Android 14 GSI ROM. So as of now, it has been maintained by two developers, Nazim and Braya. You could download any one of them. I'm using the second one. This, this is because the first developer does not have a GApps build. On the other hand, the second developer does have a GApps build. And as of now, I want to install a GApps build in my phone. So as you could see, at the time of recording, I am talking about it's on the, the first developer has removed the Android 14 GS build. So it only has the vanilla build. There is no GS build. On the other hand, the second developer does have a GS build as well. So that is the reason why I am using the second developer. It might happen that in the near future, the first developer might also release the GS build. So you could keep a tab from this link. I've given both this link. As of now, I'm using the ROM by the second developer. Moreover, you might see quite a few variants of the GSI ROM. So which one you should download. So for instance, in this case as well, as you could see the naming is first is the name CR Dwight, then is the CPU architecture. It will be ARM64 for all the phones near about. Then you have either the BGN or BVN. So in this case, you will have to eat for the V stands for vanilla and G stands for Google apps and packages. So you could choose either of them. Apart from that, if you want to understand more, then you could refer to my guide. So for instance, the first is the CPU architecture. You could simply install the triple check app from Play Store and verify all these results on the CPU architecture. If it's showing as 64 bit ARM, then you will have to get hold of the ARM 64. Next comes for the AB. So if your phone is system as root, if it says as system as root, or yes, then your device is AB and then you will have to take download the one which has the B keyword in its ROM name on the 
other hand if your phone does not support system as wrote or it shows as no then your phone is a only and in that case you will have to download the rom which has only the a keyword so in our case and in most of the phones most of the phones are system as root so in that case you will have to download the rom which have the b name in their keyword fortunately in our case as you could see both this rom have the b keyword so both of these rom are for the system as root only next one is the g and v which i already told you before the g stands for google apps and v is for vanilla build after that we have the n or s so n signifies no super user so this means that the rom is not rooted on the other hand s signifies super user which means that the rom already comes with super user installed as root so in our case we have all the roms as mostly n which means there is no super user and there is no root involved if you want you may root the rom later on so as of now there is no root so with that said as you could see over here as well there are few uh, the same thing arm64 is the cpu architecture then b stands for not system as root so it only has b then v is the vanilla build and n is no super user so you could refer to my guide and understand all this thing apart from that it might also list vndk lights secure or personal so you will have to go to the triple check app and verify the vndk it should tell you whether your phone support vndk or not if your phone supports vndk then it should show as vndk light on the other hand it will show as non vndk as of now we don't require this so because the rom is not for this so you would simply download the rom either bgn or the bvn as of now i'm going with the g apps which is the bgn so download the rom from here and once you have got the rom let's now move ahead with the next step so you will now have to extract the rom onto your phone onto your pc so this is the rom let's extract it the rom is in the exit format so you could use an software known as 7zip to extract it so right click on it then let's show more option choose 7zip and extract files or rather extract to cr drive and it will make a new folder and extract the files inside that folder so it will take a couple of seconds let's just wait in the meantime let's move ahead with the next step so the next step is now you will have to download the vb meta file for your phone make sure to download the same version which is currently installed onto your phone so first and foremost you will have to download the stock firmware or the fastboot rom for your phone you may download it from the official website or from a trusted third party site such as xda once you have got the web firmware just verify that it should be of the same version which is currently installed onto your phone you could verify the same from the about phone version as well as by going into the build number section on many phones on xiaomi phone you could verify via the miui version so in my case i am using miui version 14060 and tl min xm so let me show you this is the same rom which i have got so this is the rom file which i have got of the same version so in xiaomi phones you could download the rom from xiaomi firmware updater's website in case of oneplus you could use the oxygen updater app or you could also check out the official oneplus site and similarly for all the other phones you may check out their official websites or a trusted non official sites such as xda anyways once that is done in case of xiaomi all the files are inside the images folder so simply you will now have to extract your firmware in case of oneplus it will be a payload.bin file so you could extract that using the fastboot enhanced tool i will link that guide and a video as well you would simply have to upload the payload.bin file in the fastboot enhanced tool and then just extract the vbmeta.img file from that in case of xiaomi all the files are there inside the images folder so we just need the vbmeta file so you will have to copy the file and paste it inside the platform tool folder on your pc so let's paste it here and it could take a few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame so as of now make sure you have check mark two requirements the first requirement is you should have extracted the gsi rom so let's just verify the same and with this we have extracted the gsi rom and got the img file secondly you should also have transferred the vb meta file which correspond to the build number on your phone that file should now have been placed in the platform to folder on your pc once you have check mark both this requirement you will now have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode so simply type in the command adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and your phone will now reboot into the fast boot mode 
it will take up to a few seconds so let's just wait for the time frame and then we will move ahead so the fast food screen might vary depending on the phone that you are using so it could take up to a couple of additional seconds and with this we are in the fast boot mode the screen that you are seeing is for the zombie redmi and poco phones for all the other phone it might vary with that said first off type in fast boot devices and make sure that you are getting a serial id if you are not getting any id then you will have to install fast boot drivers i made a separate guide and a video on the same you can refer to my guide and install the fast boot drivers once that is done right click on the windows icon and choose device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fast boot signify that the pc is able to read the phone in fast boot mode and we are now good to go ahead so first and foremost you will have to flash the vb meta file and disable the verification check so simply copy this command and paste it in the cmd window and with this the vb meta has been disabled after that you will now have to reboot your phone to the fast boot d mode so again simply execute the fast boot reboot fast boot command and your phone will now reboot into the fast boot d mode it will take around 5 to 10 seconds and once again the screen might vary depending on the phone that you are using it's currently a poco phone that i am using so this is the screen of fast boot d mode once that is done you will now have to remove the product a partition so as to make space for the gsi rom so simply copy this command and paste it here it will remove the product a partition and then make space for the gsi system partition rom so with this the removal is complete and now we could move ahead and flash the rom so for that you will first and foremost have to go to the extracted gsi rom copy it and transfer it to the platform tools folder on your pc so let's do the transfer it will take a few seconds once that is done let's just rename the file to something shorter so for the ease of convenience let's just rename it to gsi and hit enter and now you will have to flash this gsi rom into the system partition on your phone so let's flash it to the system partition for that type in fastboot flash system and the name of the file which is gsi.img and hit enter and the flashing will now start it could take up to 10 to 15 minutes so let's just wait for the flashing to complete as you could see it has broken down the system partition into 17 smaller partition it will now flash each of this partition and once that is done your phone will then boot to the os so let's just wait for the flashing to complete so guys as you could see the flashing is now complete now you will have to do a format data this will wipe off all the data from your phone so just type in fastboot space w and hit enter and it will now erase the user data once that is done you could now simply reboot your phone to the os so type in fastboot reboot and hit enter and our phone will now reboot to the newly flashed os do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some additional time this is completely normal and nothing to worry about from the subsequent time the gsi will not take that much longer so let's just wait for a phone to boot up and then we will check out the rom as well and the rest of the features of this rom and as you could see it's the boot animation so this signifies that the flashing is completed successfully and we could now just wait up for a few more seconds and this is the cr droid boot animation boot logo so the only thing which you have to keep in mind while flashing the gsi rom is the file name so you could go through my guide and get hold of which type of file you have to flash mostly you will have to keep the hold of vg and ns because as you could see as of now it's only we only have the pgn and the bvn so that shouldn't be a cause of concern the g is for google apps and v is for non google apps vanilla build and the rest are the same at the time of recording if there are any changes to either of these roms you could refer to my guide and understand the whole concept of the rom renaming and then download the rom file accordingly so with that said we are now booted to the rom so let's start up with the process and as of now i will skip the initial setup process and take you to the os so let me skip all these stuffs and we will then directly boot to the os so let me skip this as well and do keep in mind that i have have installed the g apps build so i will get a few google apps pre installed and you could restore the apps if you want right now or you could do so later on as well and this is the wallpaper of cr dwight and as you could see i have a few pre installed g apps 
बिकॉज आई हैव चूजन द गूगल एप्स बिल्ड एंड द ऑडियो इफेक्ट एंड द म्यूजिक एप्स आर ऑल्सो देयर द कैमरा एप इज ऑल्सो देयर ब्राउजर इज ऑल्सो देयर सो दीज एप्स आर देयर एंड दिस इज द क्यू एस टॉगल्स लेट गो टू द सेटिंग्स मेन्यू एंड दीज आर द पी एच एच ट्रिबल सेटिंग्स इफ यू यू को चेक आउट द कॉलकॉम फीचर्स देन यू हैव अ फ्यू जोमी फीचर्स एज वेल इनेबल डबल टैप टू वेक एंड साइलेंट मोड देन दोज फीचर्स एज वेल मिसलेनियस टूक्स दीज आर द हाई लेवल डेवलपमेंट टूक्स सो मेक श्योर यू नो वॉट यू आर डूइंग बिफोर मूविंग अहेड विद दीज टूक्स एंड देन देर आर फ्यू आई एम एस टूक्स इफ यू आर हैविंग इशूज विद नेटवर्क देन यू कुड टैप ऑन रिक्वेस्ट आई एम एस नेटवर्क एंड रेक्टिफाई दिस इशूज देन यू हैव अ फ्यू कस्टमाइजेशन फीचर्स एज वेल सो पॉइंटर टाइप माउस पॉइंटर दिस इज नॉट ऑफ आर कंसर्न सो यू चूज एन एक्सन कलर default icon shape there are quite a lot of accent shapes let's go for hexagon and check out the results so as you could see the icon shape has taken place then there are a few icon packs in fact quite a lot of icon packs let's choose for oxygen os and it's the well since we only have the stock apps installed so you might not see much change in that let me go back to the default then Okay, let's select the Xperia one as well. And okay, so apart from that, you have a few other tweaks as well. The font family you could choose from a quite a lot of font. Okay, so let's check out the nothing dot font. And as you could see, the change has taken place. And inside the app drawer as well, QS tiles across the OS. Anyways, let's go back to the default font. As you might could see from here, there are quite a lot of font styles. to choose from and with this as you could see these are all the other features that you get across all the gsi roms and this is the pixel ui experience you could change the wallpaper and choose the clock style there are quite a lot of lock screen clock style which are there in the android 14 qpr beta 1 and beta 2 builds you could choose them from here and then change the color style according to the wallpaper as well this is the monad theme engine into with android 12 and then you could implement shortcuts on the home screen then change the wallpapers and this is the home screen and from here you could implement the theme icon as well so let's check out whether that happens or not and as you could see the theme like icons have been taken place and as you might be aware the theme icons are only implemented in the home screen and not on the app drawer apart from that you also have the option to change the number of apps on the home screen so you could choose for instance 5 into 5 by 7 and more number of apps could be incorporated by default it's 5 cross 5 across all the phones and in the stock pixel ui you don't get any other option but in these custom gsi rom you have the option to customize them even further as you could see from here apart from that you there is the icon font style which you have already checked out and there is the icon shape which you could tweak from here So guys on that note we round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of these steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching let me just show you one more thing is the C Android 14 and Android build is Android 14 so on that note we round off this video and all your queries are welcome in the comment section below